Um, I just think pe providing people with an opportunity to change, you know, and not never giving up on them. It's a second chance for people, uh, not to judge them too harshly, you know. Uh, I was, if you did know me, you know, seven, eight years ago, you would not recognize me, you know. Um, I was one of those people, one of those scary drug addicts on the streets. Sean LeBlanc, I'm a peer outreach support worker with Ottawa Inner City Health. So I left home at 13, I faced some uh, sexual abuse in one of the emergency services that I had to access because I was basically homeless at the time. But I got through that and I got some housing and worked basically through high school. Um, came back east because my grandparents were I was very close with at the time, um, got sick and enrolled in school. Things were going really great. I got some work uh, DJ both on radio and in clubs and uh, doing well in school. And I met a lady and we came very close. She became pregnant and lost um, the child at seven months within her pregnancy. And I really went off the deep end with that. I didn't want to feel per se, or I didn't want to hurt. Uh, I started drinking but I found that didn't work too well for me because I was getting so sick and everything. A quote-unquote friend turned me on to some opiates, some Dilaudid one night, and I'm like, yeah, that was basically the, the winner there. Living in a crappy rooming house and, you know, being broke by the second day of the month, and I was just, I was getting really fed up with it. I wasn't happy, and then uh, my best buddy died of a fentanyl overdose. He was 37 years old, and that, that really wiped me out. Um, I just know that I didn't want to end up like him. I tell people sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want to make some changes in my life and slowly but surely I did. You know, people deserve to be housed regardless of their addiction or substance abuse or mental health illness. It's basically the first step as, as far as I'm concerned. It wasn't until I got housing where I was actually able to make positive changes in my life. Uh, it's just nice to belong somewhere and not, you know, having somebody wish you out of the neighborhood. It's just nice to be a part of the community, you know. People take for granted, you know, just the ability to lock their doors or go down and lie down, and, you know, on a Saturday afternoon or read a book and have a cup of tea. These are all things you can't do in a shelter. It's how I wake up every day now, um, happy, you know. And it, it's a modest living, but it's one that I really love a lot. I used to wake up and wish I could go back to sleep because just facing the miseries of the day were always so rough and everything. But now I wake up beside, you know, someone that I really love in a cute little apartment, you know, just blocks from um, my work and a place where a lot of change is happening and everything. And it, it really empowers me. It really inspires me, actually. I really saw that there was a need for a voice for people with uh, experience in drug use. So I founded a nonprofit myself called DUAL, the Drug Users Advocacy League. Um, and we just started having meetings, uh, organizing from there, and just basically wanted to say in things uh, specifically that were gonna affect our future. Like any marginalized group, we wanna say in decisions that are gonna affect us. I was able to mesh the advocacy I was doing with my recovery. It was like the more I recovered from my addiction, the more I was able to advocate for my population. And then the more that I advocated, I was able to recover more. So it really kind of went hand in hand with each other. Making someone's day just a little bit better can sometimes be the impetus for great change, you know? And uh, I feel a great responsibility and uh, take it very seriously. It's, it's really emotional work, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's just amazing how resilient people can be, and I, I just think everybody deserves a second chance.